Dames en heren. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Today we will talk about the future of agriculture and the common agricultural policy. I welcome you on behalf of the representation of the European Commission, LTO Netherlands and the Ministry of Economic Affairs. I would like to introduce you to our international guest. Please help me in welcoming Phil Hogan, Euro Commissioner. Thank you. And I would also like to introduce you to our Minister of Agriculture, Nature and Food Quality, Carola Schouten. Welcome here at the Citizens Dialogue. We look forward to talk with you about the future of agriculture and uh, uh, common ag agriculture policy. Thank you. Um, and a special welcome to the people who are joining us through the live stream, because we have many followers in the country and they, uh, they are live with us in the live stream. And they can also submit questions for the Minister and the Euro Commissioner uh, through Slido. I will switch back to Dutch because during this uh, citizens uh, Tijdens deze citizen because during the citizens dialogue we will mainly talk in Dutch and there will be three speeches that are in English you can all follow them by means of the headsets and we have simultaneous interpretation for you my name is Anna Heiker of the Dutch debating Institute and I will be your moderator for the day a lot will happen in respect of agriculture because now a lot has been arranged at the European level, but does the Finnish farmer need the same facilities as Dutch farmers like you or farmers in Italy? So that is why much more will be delegated to the national level. And in the summer of 2018, a legislative proposal will be uh, proposed to the European Commission and we will work on a strategic plan in the Netherlands and that's what you will do. So now it is a good time to discuss and to see what will happen and to hear your input. During this meeting, first of all, we have three speeches. First of all, Mark Calom will take the floor, who is the chair of LTO. Next, Minister Scouten will speak and then the Euro Commissioner. And then we will discuss together based on three teams. These teams are the CAP and climate targets. The second one is agriculture and nature and the third one is enhancing the position of farmers in the internal market. You can also submit your questions. You can do it through Slido. It's a tool we use. So I would please like to ask you to take out your mobile phones and to move to Slido.com. So, please access slido.com and if it's correct, you will see that you can enter an event code. Slido is S-L-I-D-O dot com. And you can do so by means of the live stream, so you can also participate in Slido. Did you succeed? And the event code is hashtag Toekomst GLB, that's T-O-E-K-O-M-S-T-G-L-B. So hashtag Toekomst GLB. Did you succeed? Now, if you swipe aside, you can see the polls. So that's Toekomst GLB, that's T-O-E-K-O-M-S-T-G-L-B. Did you succeed? Yes, please tell me. Okay, fine. And you too, everything's okay? Now, the first poll you will see is who are you? And you can choose from farmer, uh, market gardener, student, journalist. Does everybody see that question? So I would like to see the results, please. Can we see it on screen or will somebody give me the results on paper? Can you already see it, the results? That's great. Thank you. I see 62% farmers, 11% policy assistance, and okay, one journalist extra, okay. 11% other. Who is other? The minister, okay. <laughs> Indeed. This is great. So many farmers 
that are present here and on the live stream, because everybody can join in. It's good to know who is present here. Many farmers, market gardeners, lots of students from Wageningen. Welcome to you too. It's very good to be here. And with the tool Slido, you can submit your questions during the question time. And you can also raise your hand when you are in the room, uh, but you can also type in your questions. So that's the practical part. So questions about GLB, about the future of GLB. And this is your opportunity to contribute, to give your input and to ask all your questions. Now we will move on to the first part, which are the speeches. I would like to welcome Mark Calon, the chair of LTO Netherlands. Please applaud. This has to be uh, done very well, so I wrote it down. Uh, dear farmers, ladies and gentlemen, dear commissioner, dear Phil, dear minister Schouten, dear attendees here at the new office of LTO Nederland in The Hague, I would like to welcome you very much at this citizen dialogue on the future of the CAP. We are looking forward to a lively discussion on this subject, which all affects us in our daily lives. I would also like to offer a warm welcome to the people who are watching us via the live stream from their farms, homes and other places. You can follow the debate we have here and participate in the discussion via Slido, as has been told. I encourage you all to do so in order to get a lively debate on this afternoon. I have the honor of opening this citizen dialogue. My name is Mark Allon and I'm the acting president of LTO Nederland. LTO Nederland is the farmers organization of the Netherlands and represents most of the farms in the Netherlands in all agricultural sectors. We are also the only farmers organization of the Netherlands which has an office in Brussels. We try to actively engage in discussions on the future of Europe and especially the future of Europe's agricultural policy. So not only the agricultural policy, the whole European policy. Last week, you, Commissioner Hogan, spoke at an event of Copa Cocheca in Brussels. There you indicated that the voice of the farmers is heard too little in the debate of the future of the CAP. I would like to underline what you said. The voice of the farmers is indeed heard too little in this debate. We, as European farmers, have difficulty to express ourselves in a unified and offensive way in the CAP debate. And by offensive, I do not mean that we have to be rude. No, I mean that we have to be open for new ideas. I would like us to be no longer in a defensive mode of just trying to protect what we have, but that we open our eyes and ears for what others think and then enter the debate based on facts and figures, but with our beliefs as a solid foundation for our arguments. This is exactly what LTO Nederland as a Dutch farmers organization wants to do. We want to encourage and facilitate the debate on agricultural issues. We want to open our minds for new ideas and use these ideas to strengthen the position of the Dutch farmers. It is therefore that I would like to welcome you all here at the new office of LTO Nederland, where we will formally start a discussion on the new proposals for the CAP. I hope that LTO can facilitate this discussion in a proper way and help us all to come a step further in our thinking on a good agricultural policy for the European farmers and European citizens. Thank you and good luck this afternoon. The floor is yours. Thank you. Dankjewel. Dan gaan wij... So thank you. We would like to move on to the next speech and that is Minister Schouten. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we're celebrating the opening of the LTO office. It's also a great opportunity to wish each other a happy 2018. A year that will see in-depth discussions on the future of the common agricultural policy, CAP for short. And I would like to thank you, Mark, for inviting me to attend. 
I value the cooperation between you, your organization and ours. And I want to congratulate you on the new office, just down the road of ours. I'm also very pleased to see Commissioner Phil Hogan here, right at the start of the new year. And the EEU communication on the future of food and farming has given us excellent insight into what's at stake in the CIP reform. Reform is vital, especially in light of the parallel discussion on the multi-annual framework and the budget impact of the Brexit. It's also about striking the right balance in three areas in particular. First, striking the right balance between income, subsidies and risk management. The CIP should aim to ensure farmers get a fair price for their produce. Where necessary, this means joining forces in price negotiations. Many farmers feel the pressure of global competition and the CIP should address this pressure and the pressure of production-related risks like extreme water, the weather, the changing climates, animal disease outbreaks and crop pests. The CIP needs to help farmers cope with these risks. Together we need to find a new balance between providing support to a crucial sector and leaving enough room for private initiatives. We also need a transition to better targeted forms of support. And that brings me to my second point. Striking the right balance between nature, farming and food. Better targeted support should lead to greater rewards for farmers who provide public goods by contributing to climate change mitigation, providing environmental services, protecting biodiversity and maintaining the countryside. Our challenge is to produce more with less for a growing world's population. That means a better targeting of scarce resources and a rebalancing of social, environmental and economic needs. It also means more sustainability in agriculture. We all need to work hard to make sure we achieve the United Nations sustainability, Sustainable Development Goals. Agriculture is linked to many of the SDGs and the sector has a special responsibility here. And third, strike the right balance between the division of responsibilities and tasks at European, national and regional level. We need a CIP that defines EU policy objectives and targets, with more scope for member states to achieve those targets, based on the subsidiarity principle. In other words, a strong European CIP with a level playing field, but flexibility for member states when it comes to implementation. When we find a new balance, I am confident the CAP will be fit for purpose again for the years ahead. What's needed is solid, close cooperation. For the Dutch, working together is second na nature. And so too is valuing farmers' common sense. That's why occasions like these are so important. So Mark, I'm very happy we're working on this issue together as neighbors. And Phil, you can count on us to achieve progress on these important reforms. Thank you. Thank you well. Thank you. We move on to the next speech by Phil Hogan. Your hands, please. Thank you. It's terrible that you had to be told. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Minister Schuten, uh, President Callan, um, distinguished, everybody is distinguished, I presume, in here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here and I wish you a happy new year. And uh, 
I'm pleased to be back in temperatures that I'm well used to in the country I know best in Ireland, <laughs> here in the Netherlands, and I uh, want to thank you for coming away from your work uh, to be here with us today and to welcome our young farmers who are online and part of this discussion, and I look forward to hearing your views later on. I've just had a meeting with Minister Shooten, and we had a very interesting discussion about the future. Uh, and uh, we reflect on the past, but we kind of see what we can do for the future to improve things. This is what policymakers would do, and this is where your input is important in terms of the practical experience that you bring to the day-to-day -day business that you do. Uh, before the, uh, the, the Christmas, as you know, as we mentioned, uh, I published a communication on the CAP, and uh, it's certainly um, you know, looking forward to people's initial reactions about that. Uh, what I'm trying to do, I will try and explain to you in a few moments, but just to tell you the process that before the end of uh, June, mid-June perhaps, we will have a legislative proposal to give effect to these policy initiatives that are taken uh, in, the, in the CAP communication. So this will be for the, the, the period 2020 to 2027. Now the CAP is often taken for granted. It's the oldest policy of the European Union. It's the only fully funded policy of the European Union back to 1962. Uh, it's uh, very successful because we have, you know from your country and your history here better than anybody, that you came from a situation after the Second World War where many of your people were starving, and where now we have the highest quality food and we have a surplus amount of good quality food thanks to our farmers, which is exported around the world and creating a lot of jobs here in the Netherlands. So this is a hugely successful policy, but of course it's often taken for granted and we cannot allow that to continue and cannot allow that uh, to be forgotten, some of those messages that I've just said. So I have deliberately put the word food into the title of my CAP communication. It's an EU food and farming policy uh, and they're linked very much between producer and consumer. Uh, and it outlines our roadmap for the next evolution, not revolution, of our CAP. People don't like revolutions, they think that that's very dramatic, so I don't want to frighten anybody. Uh, but we want to uh, do a few things. We want to deal with the issues of a more simplified policy, a more flexible policy for implementation, and a more su sustainable policy for, to protect our environment. And the CAP has to adapt to the global pressures around market volatility, around biodiversity and climate change, because we've had international agreements. Uh, in Paris, we had COP21 in climate, we had the Sustainable Development Goals, and we've had the United Nations Nutrition Agreement as well. All these happened since the last reform in 2013. In fact, they all happened in 2015. Uh, so we have to reflect those. There's no point in doing agreements unless we're going to try and implement them. And I believe that we should do so. And that we use, use the opportunity now of the review of our policy to do this. Um, so I strongly believe that making the policy simpler is important. We've had too much complexity in the present policy. We want less bureau, bureau, bureaucracy, but more focus on results, uh, which I believe is, uh, I believe that can be achieved. We, you know, we're in a situation now where we're competing with others for money. And there's no God-given right for farmers uh, to have a common agricultural policy which is 38% of the budget. We have to justify it. Uh, and we have to do so in a way that's very smart and very pragmatic uh, and less bureaucratic. So this is a kind of the backdrop to where we are. So what we are trying to do is in the policy in terms of principles is, apart from in implementing our international agreements, we want to boost quality employment and growth and investment in our rural areas. We want to harness the potential of the energy union, the circular union, and the bioeconomy. It's not any more a luxury for the CAP to be standalone policy. We have to have an integrated nature of our policy with other policy areas in the energy area, in the bioeconomy, and in the circular economy. We want to bring research and innovation onto our farms, but also bring them out of the, re the universities and the research institutes onto our farms, all of these new innovations. And we want to co fully connect our farmers and our rural communities to the digital economy. Uh, and contribute then to other policies in the European Union, uh, you know, like, like migration, for example. I, I want to emphasize that farmers will be continue to be directly rewarded for addressing many of these issues. Direct payments in the two-pillar structure will be retained in order to guarantee income support for people that we want to do all of this work that I've just spoken about. Because I always say this, that farmers are the only group that I know of in our rural areas that can actually achieve our public goods on behalf of society. And not just food quality but, and uh, food quantity, but equally all of the other environment, climate and other goals that society and our taxpayers expect from us. So our farmers are the boots on the ground that can deliver for all of society in so many 
many various ways. And I want to be crystal clear about our commitment to the maintenance of, of income support for our farmers because in paragraph 321 of the communication, direct payments remain an, an important part of the CAP in line with our treaty obligations because in the Treaty of the European Union, we have to give a fair remuneration to farmers for their work. So that's in the treaty. So how we do that, of course, is always open to debate. But it's there, and we have to try and help you to achieve that and spend the money well and support you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a proper way. The overarching policy parameters and objectives will be set at EU level in a new policy. So we're not uh, in any way removing ourselves from the, uh, the EU common agricultural policy. We have overall parameters and objectives will be very strongly adhered to at EU level. Member states then will be in a position to design their CAP strategic plans with your input and your consultation uh, in order to meet those objectives and targets. So there'll be targets set at member state level and European level. There will be objectives set at European level and your, the, the Minister's uh, plan will have to be approved by the European Commission in order to ensure that we have a common policy. So the C in the CAP will be very strongly retained and there will be no renationalisation of the policy. But we have to find a better way if we want to simplify the policy and have your input more appreciated and involved with the Minister that we have to find a balance where we can get you involved more to see what to get away from the one-size-fits-all policy in the European Union to reflect your local circumstances more. Like Dutch farmers and Greek farmers have a different way of achieving objectives. You have a different way of actually farming and you also have different priorities. So we are you know, reflecting what I'm hearing for the last three years since I got this job from farmers and from public representatives and farm organisations like the LTO for to, to say, look, at, it's too complex. We have no flexibility in terms of what we want to do relative to what we have to do, and we want to change. So I'm making the proposal. At least I'm putting suggestions on the table. And uh, the generally, uh, the, 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 the response has been very good. Uh, the common in the CAP, as I say, is, is something that people want retained because they don't want distortions to the single market. The purpose of the new delivery model, therefore, is to increase the accountability of our national administrations to EU level, uh, but also to the most important people of all, the farmers on the ground. And measures which fit better to local conditions, conditions, in my view, will better fit the results and the performance of the policy in due course. So the Commission approval process of the Member State CAP plans will ensure that everyone must pull their weight and everyone must be involved. The second pillar of the CAP also remains a very invaluable aspect of the policy. A strong rural development pillar helps to ensure the vitality of our rural areas, and as the communication notes, the CAP is the rural champion of the, uni of the Union. So we are committed to reinforcing our support for the rural communities through capacity building, investments, innovation support, uh, networking through the provision of financial instruments for improving skills and our services and our infrastructure, so that in line with the Cork 2 declaration, a better life in rural areas, we have people that, whether they're farmers or non-farmers, they can feel that they can live in a rural area with all of those services that we would expect anybody in an urban area to have. I, as the policy evolves and uh, the new challenges emerge, the second pillar allows us to do a lot more than we did in the past. And nowhere is this more the case than the area of innovation and technology. We need to urgently deepen our synergy between agriculture, the bioeconomy and research and find better ways to help adapt the EU farming sector towards the modern age. I know this will resonate well with the Netherlands and with our farmers here because you are very strongly committed to innovation and you are very progressive in your farming practices and new technology anyway. The EU is currently number one globally in terms of agricultural trade. Uh, if we want to maintain our competitiveness, we have to invest in our farmers and our farms in terms of modernization, innovation, diversification and the uptake of technologies. And we have to ensure that the digital based opportunities are available to people in the rural areas as well as people in our urban areas. So we're looking at areas like precision agriculture. So finally, Madam Moderator, um, um, let me say a few words about the budget because I know that our listeners will be interested in money uh, and I'm a passionate believer in money and a strong and well-funded CAP. Uh, but anyway, I believe our policy is well placed. But we have Brexit, which is going to create a gap in the budget. We have new initiatives like defence, security, migration, all of these issues are going to put demands on our budget. So we have a challenge here in terms of maintaining the existing share of the budget in agriculture. But in any event, the, we will be making a proposal in the Commission in May and be a matter then for the governments and for the European Parliament to see whether they agree or disagree. Um, and there's various ways in which we can do that. We can cut expenditure or we can raise no money. So that's the balance that we have to strike. So I look forward to hearing your views in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Dank u wel. Um, zoals al gezegd wordt, we Thank you. As we uh, said, we don't have to take the cap for granted. And right now, when we need um, reforms, we should all give our input. And we will now focus on the first theme, which is cap and climate goals. How can cap contribute to achieving the climate goals? And up to this meeting, I asked various farmers, how often are you engaged with the climate? Because it sounds so big and, and such a wide scope to me. And most farmers said, well, I work on that every day. Um, I think about it a lot. It's a very important theme. So we will now watch a video. And that video was taped in Wageningen at the Research University. We will see Linda groot nibbeling and you see her here. She has a question for Phil Hogan, so let's watch the video. My question to you is, if the current two-pillar system is maintained, how can the direct payments be reformed in such a way that it gives incentive to farmers to farm more environmentally sustainable, and thus contributing to SG 13 climate change and SG 15 life on land? Thank you. Thank you for the video. So if the current two-pillar system is maintained, how can the direct payments be reformed in such a way that it gives incentives to farmers in order to farm more environmentally friendly, sustainable? This is a very important objective for me, uh, as well as I'm sure the Dutch government. And, uh, and many farmers have been saying this to me, that they want to have be more incentivized in order to achieve some of our objectives regarding public goods including implementation of our international agreements. This is why in the communication, I, if you read the communication carefully, you will see that in Pillar 1, we're giving flexibility to the member state to convert some of the direct payment structures into a, an entry-level scheme or into a voluntary scheme to incentivize farmers to do more on the environment and climate. Before you go on to Pillar 2, where you have a more ambitious agri-environment programs that you can implement. So I'm making particular flexibilities here to allow member states, if they wish to take them up, and it's optional, uh, you know, to take them up. But there's nothing stopping uh, the, the, you know, your government uh, and, your, and your stakeholders coming together to have a program that we can feed into me to the Commission for approval in relation to the CAP strategic plan to precisely uh, reflect the, the, the issue of converting some of Pillar 1 payments into environment schemes. So the flexibility is there. It's, it's okay, thank you. So you can stand up, please. Uh, yes. um, so you say that it's actually up to the countries themselves to um, to adjust, or, yeah, to use this flexibility to um, maximum effect. Yeah. Yeah, to make it more effective. Mm -hmm. For example, in the voluntary coupled support. Um, but the voluntary coupled support, the, the most part of this money actually goes to support dairy farming, um, um, the meat industry, or yeah, animal farming. Well, first of all, we are we are abolishing the present system of greening because it's not working effectively for farmers or for environmental objectives. Secondly, on there will be conditionality in relation to Pillar 1 money and Pillar 2 money in relation to agri-environment. So, you know, I believe that if somebody gets money, they should be able to do something apart from food security, which is a fundamental issue of CAP, that if we want farmers to do more for, the, for public goods, they have to be paid for it. But they're like any professional services. But Pillar 1 money can be converted in a voluntary way by governments in their strategic plan if they want to prescribe something on the environment and climate. And then in Pillar 2, you can go on to the next level. 
uh, agri-environment programmes, and that has to implement, of course, the, the overall, in a more integrated way, the Water Framework Directive, the Nitrate Directive, issues that I won't mention here that are very important to you in terms of emissions and everything like that. So these are issues that can be tackled and dealt with then in Pillar 2 with additional financial support for farmers for, for providing uh, outcomes on climate and the environment and other areas. So I think that there's, there is a quite a significant amount now, but I want to emphasize this. It has to then meet the EU-wide objectives, and the Commission has to approve the plan. So you cannot just do everything and anything you want to do yourselves. It's not really nationalizing the policy. It has to fit in with our broad objectives at EU level of meeting targets at EU level and at, and at member state level around environment and climate and the area that you mentioned. So I know that I think that this will be received quite well by the Dutch farmer, in my view, from what I heard of the, the 10 or 12 times I've been here in the last three years, I've, been, I've heard enough about it. So now you're getting an opportunity for, to feed in for your solutions in a practical way, and you can tailor your own solutions, provided you meet the EU-wide objectives. Thank you. We have time for one more There is time for one more question on the climate. Does anybody in the room have a question? If so, I will come to you. Okay, please stand up. What is your name? Where are you from? My name is Iris Bauer. I'm a farmer in the Netherlands. I'm also vice chair of the Council for European Young Farmers. Thank you for coming here today. I have a question that is indeed about the climate, but also something that's clearly linked to it, people that will have to farm in future in a changing climate. Now, 5.6% of European farmers uh, have an age below 35, and that's really low. And we have to change the CAP for that reason, and the Commissioner is really aware of that. How will the Commissioner make sure that in the CAP that we will have in future, you will take specific measures to support young farmers? As you know, Iris, I have been championing the case of generation renewal in the lead-up to my communication. Member states are doing some, some good measures at the moment in terms of where their competence is in taxation in particular to help partnerships and management and inheritance and all of these issues which are important. This is outside the remit of the Euro European Union. So what I've been looking at is how we can we give some added value to what the Minister may wish to do in the future on generational renewal, which I know she's committed to, because she told me today. Uh, and uh, you know, we have to look at the more attractive nature of the existing policies, like the Young Farmers Installation Aid, like financial instruments, uh, for example, low-cost money for longer terms for specific investments that you, a young person may wish to take up if they take over the management of the farm. And thirdly then, of course, you have no chance as a, as a young person in getting involved in the future in the management and control of your farm unless the older generation are financially secure. So we have to look at what we can do to have a, a package that can help the Minister and working together to achieve the objective of generation renewal along these lines. So again, our plans at strategic plans, I think we, we, we would certainly very much agree on the need to prioritize this area. Thank you. Minister Schouten, how kijkt u aan tegen? And Minister Schouten, how do you view um, supporting young farmers? I can do this in Dutch, can't I? Yes. Well, indeed, we just discussed this. We've indicated that the Netherlands have made money available to support young farmers. And we feel it's important that new generations will have an opportunity to take over the good business of farming, but that it isn't obvious because it is rather insecure, there are many risks, and we want to assist. At the same time, the policy of the Commissioner um, has resources, he contributes to that. And we, have a, and we also discussed to make sure that we can design policy that will enhance the European policy in order to be more effective for young farmers because literally 
they are the future. Yes, indeed, the future, so we must be more effective, and you are working on it. Now, let's move over to the second theme, which is nature and farming. It's about biodiversity. As farmers, you are engaged in this every day. I heard lots of stories about wonderful edges on your fields in order to improve biodiversity, about uh, farmland birds, and lots of things are happening with regard to um, agriculture and farming, we, agriculture and nature. We will look at a video of um, Mrs. Vedder. She's here, so we can start the video now. Ik ben Vedder en ik ben melkveehouder in het mooie Drenthe. Mijn opa was akkerbouwer in de Tweede Wereldoorlog en echt een boer van de Mansfeld generatie. Zijn opdracht vanuit de samenleving was heel helder. Goed, betaalbaar voedsel produceren, zo efficiënt mogelijk. Vandaag zie je in de maatschappij een andere vraag ontstaan. Een roep om meer ambitie op het gebied van biodiversiteit en landbouw. Ik heb er alle vertrouwen in dat we in Nederland kunnen voldoen aan die ambitie, want we hebben er alle ingrediënten voor in huis. Er zijn al verschillende initiatieven ontstaan vanuit boeren en coöperaties, bijvoorbeeld de duurzame zuivelketen. Mijn vraag aan u is, hoe kan het GLB ervoor zorgen dat deze bestaande verduurzamingsmaatregelen worden versterkt? Dankjewel. Right. And it's also nice that you indicate how um, the debate is shifting in time. Uh, first, we came from an age, as the Commissioner indicated, when we had to make sure that a lot of mouths were fed. But fortunately, we are, we are at a point uh, where we can say that that was really effective. Even though the challenges are still major, uh, we still have uh, to feed the whole world. But there is a gro an intensifying discussion between farmers and nature now. Personally, uh, I've made it an ambition not to look and to think at uh, conflicts and opposites, but to see how we can uh, bring this about together. How can we strengthen that? I'm looking at the debate often in which it often seems as if the two parties are uh, opposite to each other, but uh, we can work together. We can't have fine nature without farmers. There are so many times farmers think about the environment. They have to deal with that on a daily basis. They determine what their productivity will be like. Uh, how their crops are doing. So it's a question that you really need to dwell on every day. For the Netherlands, it's important that we make sure that the initiatives that there are uh, can actually be maintained. And that's why it should become easier to uh, work together more in chains. I also discussed that with the Commissioner just now. And if we want farmers uh, to produce according to societal standards, we have to make sure they get a good price to do so. Otherwise, uh, you will have to stop farming soon if you don't get the price you need. So this really requires the strengthening of the position of farmers in the chain. And we have, they have to be able to form cooperations and uh, get a greater uh, negotiating clout in order to ensure that the price will actually be paid. Now, that is an item which is a part of the CAP but also one that we will continue to discuss because we sometimes come up against uh, competition issues that block this. Uh, we discussed that this morning as well. Um, at the same time, I'm convinced that we um, need to go towards more targeted payments. So compensation from the CAP for the societal uh, tasks and the public good that uh, farmers are responsible for, especially in the areas of biodiversity, for instance. If this means that there are certain costs incurred, then there must be uh, the scope to uh, afford this within the CAP. That would be uh, under the second pillar to get uh, funding for this. The Netherlands is uh, advocating this. So this links up with the uh, commitment that the Netherlands has uh, towards the CAP. We see uh, enough links to make this possible. Thank you. What the Minister said, I, I think there's two ways in which farmers are going to get paid in the future. They're going to get paid from the market, but also they're going to get paid from environmental services. 
So biodiversity fits in very well, along with water, soil, air, climate. All of these issues are going to be important if you want to maintain farmers' involvement in the countryside and all of the good work that farmers can do on behalf of society for our rural areas. So this is, a, I think, a win-win scenario for society and farmers if we work together in terms of what we can achieve here as part of our strategic plan. We have there an Does anyone have a very short question about nature? Well, that brings me to you straight away. Okay, who are you and where are you from? Alex Tanega from the uh, I'm a farmer, a crop farmer. In the under today's pillar one, we've got partly direct support and we get compensated, you know, uh, money for a for a, a truck. <laughs> if we want Pillar one to do more for nature and for other peripheral matters. How how can we prevent them that it is going to be uh, involve a lot of red tape and that we need to do all sorts of tricks for the same thing we are actually doing today? So that's my question, really. Thank you. Uh, I, I I think that simplification is one of the core things we must focus on to make sure the CAP becomes more effective. Of course, now uh, w there are many conditions and rules and regulations, and the administrative burden is huge, and there is also uncertainty whether things are actually uh, proceeding well. If you want the CAP to become more effective, we must ensure that it is simplified. Yeah. So that is one of the matters that the Netherlands is fighting for. Part of this is also to do with the fact that countries uh, uh, get more s scope to uh, direct that themselves. And I think that is one of the challenges we face, to make sure that the CAP stays or perhaps becomes more effective uh, so, uh, so as to reduce the administrative burden and accountability. We need improvement there because otherwise we may lose a lot of money but a lot of accountability as well. And we don't get the result we actually want to achieve. As well as that. I believe in conditionality in relation to money being provided to anybody. So we expect our farmers to be paid on the basis of what they will achieve. But secondly, by doing that, you shouldn't expect to have European Union controls and member state controls zooming down on you. So we need to rationalize all of these controls and make them more simplified, have less of them on a more risk-based approach. So if your member state have an error rate, for example, in relation to the assurance of our money of 2% or less, you know, that's very low. So therefore we should have less controls. We shouldn't be worried about a member state that has those low levels of actually problematic cases. And I, the minister and I spoke very much about not frightening the horses which means farmers are member states into protecting our money at European level to the extent that nobody will do anything or be afraid to do anything. So we have to have certainly less controls and more risk-based approach, but also more satellite technology instead of human beings. So what I envisage, instead of 5% checks at the moment, we have 1%. For, and, and we'd have a much more risk-based approach for countries that are doing good work at the moment. So we to I totally agree with you that the complexity that we have there at the moment arising from the 2013 reform. You should know that there was 8,000 amendments to the last reform of this EAP. Uh, you know, so I don't know where they, all these amendments came from. But <laughs> <laughs> but then you wonder to know why it's not simple. Uh, you know, so I'm trying to encourage my members of the European Parliament and, and, and the Council to make sure that we don't have as many this time. But of course, this is, requires me uh, to engage more at the early stages to ensure that we understand each other very well before the ball is thrown in in the game. You know. <laughs> Mooi, een uitgebreid antwoord op de korte Right, a very extensive answer to the uh, extensive question. An hour is short, of course, but I saw that a lot of questions has, have come in via Slido. And these, those questions will be answered after this meeting. Everything that is not answered within this hour uh, will be answered later. So you can rest assured uh, this has also been promised by the teams of Phil Hogan and Carola Schouten. You will get answers to your questions. Please keep sending them in. On we move to the third theme, the third team, and that is the strength
strengthening of the position of farmers within the European market. We export so many goods and uh, we've also uh, recorded a video. The uh, main character is here, Gerard Mathers from Groningen, and he's, he's, he's recorded a video around this theme at his farm. Goedemiddag, ik ben Gerald Maters, 27 jaar en heb een akkerbouwbedrijf samen met mijn broer in die kerk. Daar vermeerderen wij uitgangsmateriaal van bodaardappelen en zaaizaden. Wij zien ons genoodzaakt om ons aan te passen aan een veranderende klimaat en ook aan de maatschappelijke eisen. Daarnaast zien wij ook een bodemgezondheid die achteruit gaat en een vergrijzende bevolking met hoge zorgkosten. De richting die we eigenlijk op moeten is naar een klimaatbestendig bouwplan met een gezonde bodem die gezonde gewassen produceert waarmee we gezond voedsel kunnen maken waar mensen gezond oud kunnen worden. Om dat te bereiken hebben we nieuwe methoden en technieken nodig en een goede marktpositie waarin een producent en organisatie kan zorgen voor een meer vraaggerichte productie. Mijn vraag aan u is daarom ook hoe gaat het nieuwe GLB bijdragen aan een betere beloning van kwaliteit in plaats van kwantiteit? En op welke manier kunnen we productie en vraag op elkaar afstemmen? Um. If you have a look at the communication that we published, you will see that there is, for the first time, a, a new emphasis on healthy living. Healthy farming, healthy farmer means healthy consumer. And so therefore we must be mindful of what the consumer demand is. The consumers of the growing populations uh, that we have to feed, as well as the growing middle class populations that are want to buy high quality European food, uh, mostly in the Far East, they are now more conscious than ever about what you're doing at home. And uh, they'll be very happy to visit you, I'm sure, uh, and just be reassured on the basis of consumer to farmer about what's happening. So I think in a discussion I had with pres your president of the LTO earlier, you know, we had, a, we had a, a, a particular Dutch saying on this, which I'm not going to repeat because I wouldn't be able, but in an Irish term it is from farm to fork. Now it's from fork to farm. It's probably the other way around we have to look at it in terms of the consumer requirement and how farmers can produce in a sustainable way that can meet those demands from the consumer. So we have quality promotion in the European Union, which we help with a shared management way with member states to drive the agenda that you are asking us to do. But we have to do better. And therefore we have to promote new technologies, uh, precision agriculture, you know, the trend is towards uh, less harmful inputs into the soil, uh, healthier soils, and therefore it ties in well with the environment and our discussion we had earlier on the environment and climate. And this is the way of the future in terms of European agriculture, to have sustainable means of production, sustainable means of processing, so that we can have a right product that's of a high quality, promoted well by member states in the European Union on behalf of our farmers. So I think you're on the right direction in terms of what I see as the future. And I would like to contribute something as well. I think this film shows that, in particular, proper soil is a basis for your exploitation. So it is important for farmers to make sure that all sorts of developments around climate change and matters like that, um, that it is not something that an individual farmer should contribute to, but you should address at a national level. The CAP uh, offers us tools to do so, and nationally we've also phrased our goals in which the Netherlands must contribute to mitigating climate change. I would say um, don't see it as a problem, but it's something um, and that it's a problem for farmers to contribute. I think that if we take steps, it's in the interest of farmers, of arable farmers, to make sure that climate change will not become a threat. We now have the situation with high water. We know in the Netherlands that it's relevant. If you have cattle um, uh, near the rivers, you have had to make sure that they are on high grounds now. Farmers are well aware how much the impact on their exploitation is, so we have to make sure that we can address climate change together and to take the right measures, but also to make sure 
that the um, resources from Europe will help us that they contribute to it. So it's in everybody's interest to do it in a proper manner and m even more so in the interest of farmers and market gardeners. Now, who would have a really brief question? You are just a bit faster. My name is Kees van Vuren. I'm a dairy farmer near Utrecht and also a student in Wageningen. And I have a question because in the past month I organized a conference for NBO, NBOK with regards to their uh, anniversary. It's about new models in agriculture. And I would like to know from you um, what are your views on the new earning model uh, with production for the world food market and the CAP should support new earning models. Looking at new initiatives like re research and innovation in terms of what we have to do to fundamental objective is to retain as many farmers in a viable way on the land or in, in food or in farming, how they can contribute to our public goods and how that model that we're talking about here already today can be actually you know, embraced by the farming community. I can assure you that if you go from one member state to the other as I do, and as your minister does, you will get very different views about what the future of farming should be. Yes. And uh, you know, we, I, I, I certainly want to congratulate the Netherlands in such a huge amount of exports that you have that's generated in such a small country relative to others uh, in such a, a, a very sustainable way to the value of being the first in Europe in terms of your exports. So this is a major achievement. So how did you do that? You did that by innovation. You did that by thinking outside the box in terms of looking at new models. So we have to be open at European level as well as member state level to see what are the new developments that the consumer is looking for uh, and see what are the new developments and models that are required to sustain our farmers. Because there are certainly no getting away from the fact that there is going to be uh, you know, pressure on farmers in the marketplace uh, to remain competitive, especially if we have to maintain the high standards of animal welfare, environment and food, which we should always uh, pay to maintain. But this certainly, uh, relative to other parts of the world, cre creates competitive issues. But nevertheless, I think it's the right policy. So we were very interested in hearing your ideas in terms of what alternative models that you have in mind, uh, because I think everybody in the context of now the, 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 the open mind that we have on the, our strategic plans, we have to look at all of these new initiatives in the same way as the Netherlands has been pioneering many new initiatives in terms of the environment and the collective approach that I saw in the south of your country even last year. So I do visit here now and again to see the new initiatives, and I was very impressed with the issues of the environment and biodiversity that I saw last year as one project, and in Wagen, and of course, I've been regularly there to hear about the new research and innovation that's going on there. So you should not feel left out of this particular discussion. We were certainly very much interested in what, hearing all views and all models of development that would help our farmers and help to grow the business. Very welcome at our farm. <laughs> Mooie uitnodiging op de boerderij inderdaad. Zo'n uur gaat ontzettend snel. That's a good invitation. So an hour moves really fast. It's nearly finished. We have two items yet to finish. The first one is I would like to ask you to take out Slido on your devices once again. During the citizens dialogue we discussed three teams. Only very briefly of course climate goals agriculture and nature and the position in the market. We are curious to know what topics would be interested for next dialogues. You must have an option for you to fill out what you thought was interesting. It says questions. No? Wasn't, hasn't it been activated yet? Right now it's activated with this gentleman. How did you find it? Through the website, of course, yes. Okay, yes, that's what we all have, isn't it? Okay, so I think the option uh, hasn't started yet on the word cloud. You can submit your themes by means of a question, and I will make sure that we will address the topics that you think are interesting in next dialogues. And if you have questions when you have drinks, please submit your questions, and we will make sure that the answers will be provided. And the final part, I would like to ask you, um, what is your experience during this citizens' dialogue, and what will you take along to The Hague and to Brussels? 
Well, it is very good to talk about something that seems rather abstract, it's something that arrives from Brussels, the CAP. Only the people who are involved know what it is all about, the compensations we give, but to realize that it is something that concerns society as a whole. It is about what the Commissioner just said about food quality. The opportunity to be able to produce something as vital as food for at a good quality level uh, at a proper price in a way that allows farmers to earn a good living because otherwise they will be finished very soon. So I believe that we should have discussions in society. It is not something that should only be addressed at ministries in Brussels, in Parliament but it's something that concerns society as a whole. So I believe that this is a start to a much wider dialogue. So if you want to um, organize more, I will try to be there. And please make yourselves heard. The farmers too, the commissioner already told you, inform me what is relevant to farmers, because this is the time to give your input. When the discussions have been finalized and we, should, and we have to say it's a pity, no opportunity now, this is your opportunity. Use it now. So it is a good invitation to organize more dialogues. The offer is here. And Phil Hogan, please. I, I know in, two, in 2015 uh, the, the dairy farmers in particular had a very serious problem in relation to their prices. So it's very easy for the Commissioner to stay in the office and talk about it to various people. So we got out of the office and we tried to get new markets. So I, I value the opportunity of getting out of the office. Not just because I don't like being in the office, but I think it's a good place to engage with people. I've been about ten times here in the Netherlands on various occasions where I've listened carefully to people like I have today to what your view is about how we can do better. No matter what policy we have, we can do better, but I believe we can do a lot better than what we have now. Uh, and uh, direct engagement uh, is very important for policy makers and the Minister and I are committed towards consultation. It's going to be a busy time of consultation anyway between 2018 and 2020 and hopefully we can get it right. So your voice is important the same as every other member state and make sure it's heard. Thank you very much. So this was the Citizens' Dialogue for today. Thank you for attending and for your active contributions. The answers will further be provided through Slido and any urgent questions you have will be answered. I noticed one question, sort of, not a real question, but anyhow. Uh, you, you saw that this hour of discussion, this citizen dialogue, uh, is, is, is very interesting and, and a lot of engagement of young farmers and young scientists to this dialogue. Uh, not only the four students of Wageningen here in the front row, but in the boardroom of Wageningen is now occupied with a number of students that following this dialogue uh, live stream. And that brings me to a special request. I know that you are uh, often in, in, in the Netherlands. Netherlands. But this year is 100 years celebration of Wageningen University. And, and so it is our centennial. And what would it be a good birthday present if, if we may ask you to come to Wageningen to have an extension of this dialogue with young scientists, young farmers, and young scientists that are farmers? Uh, I hope you, 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 you can find one moment this year, 2018. To celebrate. I think you uh, never miss an opportunity. You have everybody going to see Wagon, and so I suppose why not me? Uh, I have been there, as you know, a couple of occasions before, but I, I, I certainly will look at the opportunity again. And last applause. So a final applause, please. Yeah. A different speech for opening up. <laughs> <laughs> I have several speeches. <laughs>